Okay, as we all know, whenever we want to solve a polynomial equation, one of the best strategies, of course, make one side equal to zero and try to do factoring on the other side, right? However, if you take a look at the equation x to the fourth power plus one is equal to zero, let me tell you, if you want to use Wolfram Alpha to factor this, unfortunately, it does not give us a very nice result. So in this video, I will show you guys two ways on how to factor this, and then we can solve the equation in a very nice way. So have a look. For the first way, I will show you guys how to factor this without using complex numbers. Yes, all the answers are complex numbers, but because we have x to the fourth power, here you can actually factor this one without using complex numbers, even though this is a sum of two squares. Have a look. I'm going to first look at x to the fourth power as x squared, and then square, and then leave some space, and look at the 1s, 1 square. And you see, here we do have a sum of two squares, and this is actually almost a perfect square, if we have some extra term. In between, right, what's the extra term? Well, the formula says, if we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, that's a perfect square, a plus b squared. So let's just go ahead and produce that by adding 2 times this and that. So 2 times x squared and 1. And all you have to do is make sure that you minus that right here so that the equations are still equivalent. All right. And that's, of course, still equal to 0. Now, for the first three terms, you will see that this right here is actually a perfect square, namely x squared plus 1 squared. And you see, earlier I chose to put on a plus right here, because now we have to minus, and we have 2x squared right here. I can actually open the parentheses, raise that to a second power, and put a 2 inside as a square root of 2, and then put the x inside. And you see now we have a difference of two squares. Now this is so beautiful, isn't it? Because we can just factor it as a difference of two squares, which is of course this minus that, which is x squared minus square root of 2x plus 1, times this plus that, which is x squared plus square root of 2x plus 1. And now we have these two factors, and both of them are quadratic. Of course, we can set this equal to 0 and use the quadratic formula to solve it. That's pretty much it. So we'll do that. So x squared minus square root of 2x plus 1, this is equal to 0. x is going to be negative b, which is negative square root of 2 here, and then plus or minus square root of negative b, which is negative square root of 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 and 1, so minus 4, right? Like this, and then all over... 2a, a is 1, so just like that. All right, and now we just have to simplify this a little bit. Well, this is going to be square root of 2 plus or minus. This is 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, inside of the square root. Negative inside of the square root becomes an i, and then we have the same square root of 2 right here. And now let me just divide this by 2 here and divide this by 2 here. So that's pretty much it. And if you look at the second one, of course, the only difference is the plus right here. So you have to put a plus square root 2 right here. That means the answer will be having a negative right there. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to write down the answers right here for you guys all. Uh, I'm actually going to write out. I'm going to write out to make it clear. So here we go. Square root of 2 over 2 plus, and then you put down square root of 2 over 2 i. First guy, and then second guy, square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 i. All right, continue. Negative square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 i, and then one more, square root of 2 over 2 minus, no, minus minus square root of 2 over 2 i. All right, and in fact, these two are what we call the fourth root of negative 1. So, we need to come here, it is the fourth root of negative 1. Do you want to know something new in this year? If so, then check out Brilliant. It's a website and an app that makes learning interactive, accessible, and fun. The approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing the concepts visually and interact with them so the concepts stick with you. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them at a bit at a time. There is no tests or grades, just pick a course based on your interest and get started. 
If you make a mistake, it's okay because you can just watch their explanation and learn more about it. You can learn at your own pace, that's the best part. No matter if you just want to learn more about algebra like the questions that we did today, or learn about like computer programming or some cutting edge topics like quantum computing or cryptocurrencies, then definitely check out Brilliant. And I have a discount code for you guys today. If you guys go to brilliant.org slash blackandrepent, you can get 20% off for your annual premium subscription. So go check them out and thank you so much for Brilliant for sponsoring this video. For the second way, I will show you how to factor this with complex numbers. First, we will have to look at this as a difference of two squares. So, x squared, squared, no problem on that. But I need to look at this as a difference, so let's put down a minus. Well, I need to have a minus 1 right here, right? Remember, everybody knows i squared is equal to negative 1. But you need to know that negative 1 is the same as i squared. So I'm just going to put it as i squared, just like that. Now, difference of two squares, we can factor it really nicely. x squared minus i, and then x squared plus i. That's equal to 0. Well, they are quadratic, so now we can just you know, put this to be 0. So x squared minus i is equal to 0. And then move this to here, so we get x equals i. Take the square root on both sides. And don't forget the plus or minus. So that's what we have. Now you see, if you're just trying to solve this equation, you have the plus or minus square root of i. And this right here is technically different than uh, the fourth root of negative 1. That's what I was going to show. But no, that's not the main focus. It's a factoring. All right, for the other one, we have x squared plus i equals 0. So that means x is equal to negative 1 times i, and take the square root on both sides. And don't forget the plus or minus. And now you have the negative i, right? So you can just put a plus or minus in front. No, just, just keep it like that. Anyway, now the question is how do we figure out square root of i? Well, let me show you guys a quick way to do it. All right. So. If you look at square root of i, first, look at this as a nested square root. Well, we know the real power of this is 0, so I'm going to look at this as the square root of 0 plus. And in order for this method to work, you need to have a 2. But we don't have 2, we have 1. So make sure we multiply by 1 half. And then i is the same as square root of negative 1. Now, as I told you, we need to have a 2. This one half is not really invited right here, this space. I need to bring this inside of this square root. One half is the same as 1 over 4 in the square root. So I'll just put that inside. So this becomes the square root of 0 plus 2 square root of negative 1 over 4. Right? Now, we are ready to, to make this work. I'm just going to put this down right here. I'm just going to open two square roots. And then I have to think about two numbers. They have to add up to be 0, and they multiply to be negative 1 over 4. And the correct combination will be 1 half and 1 half. But this 1 half has to be negative in order to produce a 0 and a negative. Even though we are all adults now, but for this one, let me still rationalize the denominator so I can match with that for you guys. This right here is going to be square root of 2 over 2, and then uh, this right here becomes the i, so we have the plus square root of 2 over 2i. And you see this right here is precisely our first answer here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And then of course when you have the plus or minus, when the minus is here, then both of them becomes minus, then you have this answer right here, right? Now if you have plus or minus square root of negative i, well, I'm just going to leave that to you. You guys will actually will get this and that for the answer. So I think I'm just going to stop right here. 